Hello guys, welcome back again, it's Carlo 209 here from Mr. Floppy Jackson, welcome to another episode from me. So, uh, in today's episode, we're going to look at something called a Windows Domain. Uh, you might have heard this before. Basically, if you're like someone who's like a system administrator, you may be very interested in this. A Windows Domain uh, allows you to control what users have access to, and you can map network drivers and do so much stuff with a Windows Domain. Uh, and it's you can you can be join to a work group or a domain, and the domain is far better than work group. You can do so much more stuff. Uh, you can set specific permissions so that people can't do, for example, access to control panel. Uh, you can restrict access to, for, for example, a task manager. You can tell what this button does. So much stuff you can do. Uh, and this following episodes we're going to be looking at creating our own windows domain uh, and this domain will be called cl-systems or should I say I know we'll, we'll call it the mfj domain yeah that's, that's good for the video mfj-domain uh, so let's get started so the first thing you're going to need uh, if you can see the example on the screen here you've got your server on one side okay uh, and you've got three client pieces on the other now this is an example of a domain system. The server will run all the user's files and all the permissions and everything like that, also known as a domain controller, or Active Directory Domain Services, ADDS, or as I like to call it, ADS. Um, and client PCs can connect to the server and they send and exchange data. Uh, so basically the server kind of like runs them, in a way. With a work group though, this is an example of a work group, as you can see, it's all peer-to-peer. -peer. No computers higher in the ranks than the other. They're all in like a circle. Now you can exchange data between them. So you've got links to all the computers on the network that are joined to the work group. So with a domain, you've got much more control about what users can do and everything like that. So in this episode, or the following episodes, we're going to put these into parts to make it much easier to understand and follow. We're going to be looking at stalling or getting our own domain. Now, the server I was talking about in the first one, obviously needs to run a specific operating system. For Windows Domain, you need Windows Server, and there are a few editions of it. There's Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2008 R2, and there's Windows Server 2012. We've got Windows Server 2000 R sorry, we've got Windows Server 2008 R2 to demonstrate here, uh, and I'm going to show you how to create your own Windows Domain. Now, there are a few differences. We are doing this virtually because it's much easier to me to record and show you, etc., etc. Where it does kind of translate into real life as well. So if you don't want to do this virtually, you want to do it for real, this video is still suitable and I'll make sure I'll tell you which part is for virtualization only, which part is for both, and which part is for, for, for real life only. So let's get started. The first stage in creating your own Windows domain network it's installing and configuring the operating system. Now, obviously I can't really afford the full version. It does cost around £500, the full Enterprise Edition. But you can get a trial, which I have. And um, the standard ISO you can download from Microsoft offers about 70 days before you have to license it. So, we're going to look at that. So, since we're doing it virtually, we have a program called VirtualBox. And this part is uh, virtualization only. So, you can see this is your like virtual machine virtual box manager. And what we want to do is we want to create a new machine and we want to call it Windows Server and it depends on which version you're using. You want to put that in. So, we're using R2. You can see it comes up with the type of operating system and the version and uh, it shows us that it's Windows Vista. It's not. We want to select Windows 2064 bit. Remember, if you are um, doing this real life, this won't apply to you. You just need to uh, insert your installation CD and then tell the BIOS to boot from the uh, CD drive. And then we'll get to that point of installing it once you complete this part. Anyway, back to virtualization world. So when I click next, and it says memory size, select the amount of memory in megabytes to be allocated to the virtual machine. The recommended memory size is 512 megabytes. So you can see here, the, the number here. It's how much RAM you have in your computer, and I have four gigabytes. And the four meg is the minimum amount you can have. 
And I recommend you do, like it says here, an eighth or a quarter of your RAM. So I'm going to select a quarter and use 1024 meg. That's one quarter of 4096. What you want to do then is you want to click next and you want to create a virtual hard disk drive which can be used to store files for the uh, virtual operating system. So you want to set the uh, middle option which is create the virtual hard drive now. Okay, And it says a hard drive file type. Any of these are supported by VirtualBox. The top one, which is selected by default, only works with VirtualBox. So I wouldn't recommend that one in case you wanted to use it with a different program. But I'm going to use Virtual Hard Disk, one that Microsoft created and uses. Now you've got the option to have a dynamically allocated or a fixed size hard drive. The difference between the two is that with dynamically allocated, the file size will increase when you start to use space on the virtual hard drive. So for example, if I allocate the uh, virtual hard drive to have 30 gigabytes of space, and I select dynamically allocated, going onto my host operating system, the file size will be if you've never um, the file size will be around three or four gig, about the size of the operating system. And even though I've allocated thirty gigabytes, it says the actual size is about three four gigabytes the size of the operating system. So down if I was to then download a few files and put them onto the uh, perhaps a, I don't know, I'd say I downloaded a five gigabyte file um, you'd find the size, the file size of the virtual hard drive would increase from three to eight gigabytes. Three plus five is eight. So, with dynamically allocated, even you can select the maximum amount you want to use, but it'll only use the, but the hard drive size will increase. The virtual hard drive size will increase as you move up, as you as you use more space. But on your host operating system. So your guest operating system, it will say, for example, 16 gigabytes free, so 16 gigabytes free of 30, for example. We're going to select dynamically allocated because it's quite useful if you don't have much hard drive space. We're going to select about 20 gigabytes. In fact, 25 will do actually. 30, 30 gig. We're going to click create. And you can see it puts it a default folder will uh, be c colon backslash then it's users backslash then your username so mine's Callum Lockett for example backslash virtual box space v capital V capital M lowercase s oops at least it should be oh oops I forgot the box VMs. Hit enter. And you can see it says you've got a folder here that says Windows Series 2008 R2, the one we just created. And you can see the virtual box hard drive file here. As you can see it's empty. It only says 62 kilobytes, even though we've allocated 30 gig. And you'll find this will increase when we install an operating system and do other stuff. So once you've got our, our virtual hard drive created, you want to go to settings, go to system. And um, we want to go to processor and make sure acceleration. Sorry, make sure that enable VTX VT X slash AMDV is enabled. Now, not all computers will work with Windows Series 2008. Since it's a 64-bit only operating system, you need CPU virtualization support to be able to run it in VirtualBox. Obviously, this doesn't apply to you if you've got if you're doing it in real life. As long as you have a 64-bit computer or 64-bit processor, it should be fine to install this operating system on. Now, you can check if you have AMD, you can check back to the virtual world. You can check whether or not you've got virtualization support on your computer and it's enabled by downloading a program called AMD uh, VTest. You can probably find it off the internet somewhere. I got it off the AMD website. You can see AMD Hyper-V, and if we open the application, Sorry, we need to run it as administrator first. If you run this application as an administrator, it tells me whether or not it's available to you, uh, whether or not we can use uh, virtualization technology, and it says it is compatible, so we can use it. So make sure that you have the uh, this enabled, and this enabled, and this enabled. Display 
you want to select how much RAM you're going to use. I'm not going to use all of it, I'm only going to use 64 meg because it's only a server operating system. I'm not really going to run games or anything like that in it. I'm just going to enable 2D acceleration as well. For storage, you'll see controller IDE, controller SATA. You can leave that, but where it says empty, you want to select the ISO for your server operating system. Sorry, I have got a cold. <coughs> So if we go to uh if we go we can uh, there's a site on Microsoft which uh, you can download the trial of Windows Series 2008 R2. That could be in the description to get it. Uh and you can find it you can download it as an ISO file. So that could be the description and take you to this page. Uh, sorry, not this page. This one. Is it this one? Yeah, it's here. I'll take you to this page here. Okay. You click the continue button, you want to download it to your computer, it's just an ISO file. Once you've downloaded that, you want to go to your controller, IDE, empty, and you want to select your virtual hard drive, your ISO file. Which is here. It's the same one that's here that we downloaded. I downloaded this earlier. What you want to do then is click on audio, select to drive the audio drive you want to use. I'm going to use Sound Blaster 16. A network, this is very important. It doesn't apply to you if you're using it in real life. If you're using it in real life, you just need to make sure that the server and the uh, client are connected to the same network. But one needs to be a network, a NAT, NAT, NAT attached network adapter. And make sure the adapter type is Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop. And that adapter 2 is enabled, and make that host only. And you want to go to Prescumptious mode. Promiscuous mode, promiscuous, <laughs> promiscuous mode, and make sure that allow all, and check check the box that says cable connected, and that's fine. Okay. Also, go into your host OS, control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and make sure that VirtualBox host only network is enabled. But now you need to go into uh, properties. Internet Protocol version 4 and make the IP address and the sublet mask as it says looks like here. This can be anything here, but that will be the default gateway for the VMs. You don't need a default gateway in here or DNS in here, just these two. And you'll find that on the host OS it will say unidentified network because there's no ga default gateway, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so once you've done that, Make sure you can have enabled USB 2 and USB if you want, it's up to you. What we want to do then is start the machine. And as soon as it starts up, press the F12 key when you see the virtual box thing come up, and press the C key. You're then going to boot the ISO up, and you can see now it's going to attempt to install Windows Server 2008 R2. So as you can see now, this uh, is the stage you want to get to, get to if you're in real life. Because now we are in accordance with each other. Now we can, you know, virtualization and real life can sort of merge. And um, what you want to do now, you want to get to the stage if you're in real life. Boot into your CD, and this will come up. Okay. You want to select your time and currency format. So we're in the United Kingdom, but obviously, which one you want to choose the one and your input keyboard, keyboard or input method. Click next and just click on the install now. Okay, let's just wait for setup to start. Okay, so we've got a, quite a few things that we can choose from to install. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to look at Windows Zero 2008 R2 Enterprise full installation, which is here. Now this is the most expensive of all of these. The cheapest one is probably standard or data center. The most expensive is enterprise. Which we're, going to, we're going to select that one. Next. We're going to accept the license terms. Next. And it says which type of installation do you want? Do you want to custom advanced? 
and you can see here this is our virtual hard drive we created and again if you're in real life this is your actual hard drive capacity you want to go to drive options then click on new and you'll see that this is the maximum size of the this this is one partition we're going to create <laughs> you want to create this the maximum size of the drive and it's already put that in by default anyway so you can just click apply click OK wait for it to create it you'll also notice that it will create a, a another partition syst for system reserved files you want to select your partition 2 click on format click OK and that's fine you can click next and now we're just going to go through the installation of installing Windows. This takes quite a while. It can take depends on your computer hardware from about 20 minutes to perhaps an hour or so. So I'll be right back once this is finished installing. Okay, guys. So the installation is completed, and you'll find that the computer will automatically reboot uh, and will get to this stage on its own, which is why I've skipped all the rest of the part. So um, basically, this we get this far. Okay and um, it's asking you to change password. It's actually got no password and requires you to create one. So what I'm going to do now is create a password okay so it's changing the password okay so it's just logging in now, preparing your desktop Usually the one that takes the most amount of time is applying user settings. <laughs> Tends to take quite a while as well as preparing your desktop. There you go. Now you can see at the moment, this is uh, Windows 32 8 R2, which you can see here. Very nice interface, similar to Windows 7. Uh, obviously, it's got the uh, classic view of it. But um, what you'll come up and find up first is uh, initial configuration tasks. Perform the following tasks to configure the server. Now, we're just going to close that down for now. Don't need that as yet. Now, the second stage will be this will be virtualization only. I advise that you install all the drivers you need if you're going to be doing it in real life. So you need your video card drivers and your chipset drivers, etc. etc. If you're doing it virtually, you want to install guest editions. Now usually if I was doing it for a Windows machine, or a, you know, Windows 7 for example, I'd put this into safe mode and install direct 3D support. But because it's only server, I only need it so it will fill the whole screen so you can get full screen. So to do this you need to install guest editions. So click on devices and click on install guest editions. Remember this is virtual the virtual world only. Once you've done that, you'll find that you click start, computer, and you'll find it's been used as a CD drive now. So double click it and select the version you want. X eighty six is a thirty two bit. VirtualBox editions is sixty four bit but for Intel, I think. And AMD 64 is 64 bit for AMD processors, which is what I'm going to select. When I click next, uh, select the destination folder, click next. Don't check direct 3D support unless you are in safe mode because it won't install it if you're in safe mode, as you can see. If I click on um, the system supports the Windows error interface, oh yeah, sorry, you just want to click on no. If you go that way, as you can see. Uh, Sorry, uh, I won't be able to actually do it though because one, I haven't allocated enough radio RAM to I'm not in safe mode, but we don't need it. We only need it to fill the screen, that's the only reason why. You'll want to always trust software from Oracle and Copper Operation. Click install the driver. Okay, I want to reboot. Obviously, this is like equivalent to installing all the drive required drivers you need if you're doing that for real life. So the uh, machine is just rebooting now. Alright, so you can see the computer is just booting up now. The mouse pointer is here. Okay. 
So what we're going to do now is just going to adjust window size and we're going to make it full screen. Should do that in a moment anyway. Now when it's just going to or delete to log on, if you're in VirtualBox, obviously you just press Ctrl or Delete on your keyboard if you want to do this for real life. When you're in VirtualBox, click on oops. Click on machine and click on insert control or delete. And I want to type in your password. Okay. So we're just preparing a desktop now. Here you go. You want to check on auto resize guest display, and you'll see. You can also make it full screen. Right, just like seeing full screen mode, but I'm not going to do so because um, you'll be able to see it else with fraps. It's not been set to record full screen mode at the moment. So, as you can see, by default, Windows configuration tasks, initial configuration tasks will come off. Uh, you can do this later, don't show, don't show this window log on, but for now we're going to just start configuring it for you here first. So, set time zone has already been active, it's already been set to the one we set when we were installed in it. Now we need to configure networking. So, we're going to do that. You want to give your uh, your server a static IP address. Now you can see two here. This is because it's in VirtualBox, but if you're in real life, obviously you're probably going to have one internet connection. But you want to give it, make sure you give it a static IP. So I'm going to do that for both of them. And this one is going to be um, using 10. We're going to find out our IP configuration. So you go into the command prompt. Type in IP config dash all forward slash all. Okay. And you want to look for our wireless uh, our internet connection, which is local area connection. It's just here. And you can see our default gateway is 10.0.2.2. This is for NAT connection. Our IPv4 address is 10.0.2.15. So we're going to enter that in. Or something mask, which is 255.255.255.0, okay. and our default gateway, which is 10.0.2.2. Our DNS server is for our ISP, uh, which you can find out off the internet, but for uh, my IS ISP, it's 194.168.4.100 and uh, the second reads 194.168.8.100. So that's our uh, our NAT setup and configured, uh, and this is just basically for the internet connection. Okay, so we have internet now, and um, now we need to configure our host only. This is what's going to be basically the main thing, really. This is for our domain, and the IP address you want to use in here uh, depends on what's given out first by VirtualBox. But the current one at the moment is 192.168.56.1. Sorry, dot two. We want to put in here as IP address. You see, the default gateway. Is the IP address we set in our host operating system for the adapter in here, and our DNS server. We want that to be 127.0.0.1, which is AKA local host, which is the DNS IP address of this here. Click OK. We don't need an alternate DNS server because we only have one set up here. And to find out, it should say network two. So we've configured that now. We've got to our networking enabled. Now we want to provide a computer name and domain. This part we don't need to set up a domain yet because um, well, we haven't created one yet and once we create one uh, it'll join the domain automatically. But we need to rename, when I change the computer name we're going to call this MFJ server. Or I'll just call it server. Alright, so maybe it's part of a work group, but it'll soon make itself a member of a domain. 
well, it'll do it automatically. Now we need to restart the computer to make all these changes. So let's do so. Again, this is the same if you're doing it in real life. Okay, so the uh, computer's booted up again now. Uh, and we can continue on with what we're doing. So we're just going to log back in. So we're going to insert, control, delete again. Okay, just log in. Okay. So we've almost completed the first uh, episode, which is configuring uh, Windows Server for well, ready to be used as a domain controller. Okay. So what we need to do now, uh, when initial configuration tasks all load up again, because at the moment uh, we've configured well, it's automatically configured to run at start. Obviously, we can disable it later on. Can get annoying sometimes. We'll just wait for that to load up. Okay. Okay. So what we need to do now is make sure that we configure automatic updating. So we're enable aut Windows automatic updating and feedback, uh, and we want to download and install updates. So we're going to check for some updates. We should get quite a lot, really. Okay, so we're just going to wait for it to check for updates. Shouldn't take too long to do that, hopefully. In fact, we're just going to skip that and actually restart. The well, yeah, it's basically we can, we can do install updates later on, but uh, it's not important right now. <coughs> Another thing we want to do also is enable the remote desktop. This means that we don't need to always be at the server to control it. We can just um, go from a client computer and have access. But we want to do want to select network level authentication. Uh, this makes it more secure. And uh, we can click OK. And um, we want to, that's fine. So we can click OK to that. So we've enabled uh, remote desktop. Or everything is basically done now. And that concludes the first episode which is getting ready for making a domain. In the next episode, we are going to make our own domain. So please watch that one. That'll want, that, that's going to be quite interesting. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next episode.